What up? 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 Hey, good people. It's Thursday. It's 1 p.m. It's the House of Ruby YouTube channel. And it's me, Pastor DJ, bringing to you a word from the Lord. I'm very excited. Thursday is almost becoming my favorite time of the week because I get to share and get to empty myself of what the Lord has been teaching me. And I also get to hear from you. I get to impact and preach the gospel to you. Paul writes and says, Woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. So the burden, necessity is laid, is laid upon each of us to preach the gospel. Because at the end of the day, how will they hear if they have no preacher? If they, how will the gospel reach to people if we do not share? And we have been deceived for the longest time to think that for you to be able to preach the gospel, you need to be on a pulpit, you need to be um, with a microphone, which is true. However, in your different spaces in business, in ministry, through social media, it's important that you always preach the gospel to the people who are around you. And you have to preach the gospel with words, not necessarily with actions. Actions as well, but you need to go ahead and tell people of the love of Jesus. Jesus loves them. Jesus died for them. Jesus resurrected on the third day for them, for you and for me, that we may have life and life in his fullness. Sometimes people just need to know that God loves them. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world and gave his, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The key word in that segment is whoever, whosoever, whosoever. It's not for anyone special, but whosoever. And in scripture, Jesus says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few who are speaking about you. So once you get into the league of, of laborers, you become among the chosen few. I'm excited for today for one particular reason. Three, actually, reasons. One, it's the last day of the month of August. We're officially entering into the last quarter of the year. September, October, November, and December are going to be one of the best months we have had in the year 2023. I prophesy that over you. Because God is in it. Not for any other reason. Not because you're special, which you are. Not because you have worked so hard, which you have done or have not done but because God is in it. And scripture tells us that we shall move from glory to glory. Scripture also tells us that our latter days, which are the days ahead, will be greater than our former days, where we have come from. So if anything, for whatever reason, at least for a bare minimum, believe that because it's the latter days, they're going to be awesome, they're going to be great, they're going to be fantastic. You're going to move from glory to glory for the path of the righteous shines ever brighter until a perfect day some versions say that the path of the righteous shines as the first uh, i think gleam of as the first as the beginning of dawn and gleams brighter until a good day so that's 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 really what the next half of the year is going to be like and it starts tomorrow another reason i'm excited is because on the first september for me every year is the time i celebrate since eight years ago that i gave my life to christ so it's been eight years of walking in a life of fulfillment, for fulfillment, eight years of walking in the fullness of God, eight years in understanding my identity in Christ. So I'm very excited and I will be celebrating it at the Transform Leaders Gathering that is happening at Worship Harvest Nalia, 1st and 2nd September. It's an amazing time where leaders from all over the world come and are just receiving some spiritual gift because John Maxwell writes and says everything rises and falls on leadership. So if the leadership is a bit a bit, there's going to be a lot of chaotic, a, a, lot, of, a lot of chaos. So that's where I'll be tomorrow. I hope you've registered. I don't know if the link is still on. I don't know if we can still register, if we can make sure we register because this is going to be an opportunity of a lifetime. This generation needs leaders, Christian leaders. And I think the theme for this year is living on mission daily, if I'm not mistaken. So come through, it's going to be an amazing, amazing time. We've been speaking about different things over the past couple of months. And this month, we've been spending time speaking about serving God. Why it's important? What is the advantage of serving? He takes sickness away from your means. He honors you. You become distinguished. You live, you know, according to righteousness. His grace towards you is not in vain. ETC, ETC. And that series came to an end last week. And... For, we will be starting a new series in the month of September, but I figured 
how would I share, how would I close off the month and close everything that um, we've been talking about. And God has given me a word uh, for you and for me in this season which we are in. I do believe that as I celebrate eight years in Christ, it's a time for new beginnings. It's a time for refreshing. It's a time for something new because eight signifies the number of new beginnings. So let's pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. <clears throat> we decrease so that you can increase. And we thank you that it is you who is in charge. Start this how you want it to go. In Jesus' name, amen. So I was asking God, does there? I'm like, okay, you know, let me just give you a little tip. Every time you, every time the earth goes around a certain cycle, on your birthday, on an anniversary, the first time you started a job, the first time you're celebrating, uh, giving your life to Christ. Uh, maybe you've been sober for a month or two months or three months. Every time you come back to that date where something significant happened. For instance, like I'm saying, I, I, I gave my life to Christ eight years ago. There are people who have been sober for two months, three months, three years, two days. It's important to always celebrate that mark because it's important, first of all, you have to schedule your celebrations because the days of mourning just appear without notice. But it's also important to seek God and ask him, what is, what is he saying to you in that season? What is, what is it? What is the message? Why have you been given an extra year? Why have you been given an extra month? Why have you been given an extra day if you've really reached that level? Because extra day, you really need a, a lot of commitment to, to be able to sustain and ask that daily. But one of the things I started to do recently is on days like my birthday, on days like the day I gave my life to Christ, on days when I'm celebrating one year in a new job or months or whatever, marriage, it's important to go back and ask God, okay, one year has passed, one month has passed, six months have passed. What is the message in this season? And there's the whole, you know, theory of the numbers, what do the numbers signify biblically, etc., etc. Like I said, eight is the number of new beginnings. It is the number of something new, next level, refreshment, etc. And I feel like when I was speaking and asking God what is the message, especially for WADAP, I thought God was going to give me some deep thing. Okay, of course it's deep, but I thought it was going to be some thing. But God has sort of taken me back to the basics. And I think it's a message for you, but it's also deeply a message for me. And if I'm to give this someone a title, it would be called God is in your corner. God is in your corner. I think about a boxing ring. Those of you who watch boxing, you know that there is the blue corner and there is the red corner. Now, every time the match is going on and people are punching, etc., etc., and they go to the break, if the person is wearing blue, he will not go to the red corner because his people are not there. They will not give him refreshments. They will not give him water to drink. They will not give him medicine. They will not give him anything. But he will go to that corner where his people are which is the blue corner, which is the corner where he's going to get, you know, his coach is there, his family is there, whoever is supporting him is there, whoever is, his doctor is there, his, his, his uh, teammates or whatever, everyone is there. And God just placed that word in my heart that God is in your corner. And when you know that he's in your corner, then you know exactly where to run to. If you've been in ministry, if you've given your life to Christ, if you've been a Christian for a very long time, it's very easy to take the things of God for granted because you're like, okay, it just becomes a job. It just becomes something that you do because you have to do. It just becomes something that you do because it's, it's what you know how to do. But you lose the, 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 the basis, the, the foundation of who Christ is and the message of Christ, which is in the message of love and restoration. And I'll read from... Romans uh, chapter 8 verse 28 to 31 it's one of those verses that we quote many times because it's a good verse however today God really revealed to me the fact that it's actually what he means so he says in Romans 8 28 I'm reading today from the NIV it says and we know the title is more than conquerors and we know that in all things all things all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to to his purpose. Key words in this verse, God help me that I reach 31 because my main verse here is 31. It says, in all things, in all things, meaning whether you are right, whether you are wrong. The Bible tells us in, 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 in Psalms that if I make my bed in hell, you're there. It also tells us in the book of Genesis that what the devil meant for evil, God has turned around for good. 
So when God says that in all things, the NIV, I love it because it says in all things, God works, God works, God works, God works for the good of those who love him. Do you love God? Yes, you do. If you don't, I'll give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. So if you love God, he's working together for good, for your good. He's in your corner. The reason during the boxing match why we give the person a refreshment, energy drink, why we plaster whatever has been hurt, why we encourage them, is because we are in their corner. So I'm working for your good. For those who have been called according to his purpose, he's working for your good. Everything that is happening in your life is working for your good. When you have that mentality, when you have that mentality, it's very easy for you to it even changes the way you pray. Because the Bible tells us that when we go before him, we should go with boldness. We go before the throne of God with boldness. Whoever seeks him should seek him diligently. Whoever diligence, diligently seeks him, whoever seeks him, sorry, should go to him knowing that he exists and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's faith. So if you come to me without the backdrop of the fact that I'm in your corner, even the way you relate with me will be from a place of fear. But he's not given us the spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. Even when bad things come, which they will, because God says that in this world you will have troubles, but take heart because I have overcome the world. After you have suffered a while, God establishes you. So when you know that God is in your corner, you pray differently. You thank him for the fact that you know he is in your corner. Some of you may be going through a tough time. Maybe you have a loved one who is sick. Maybe you're sick in the heart. Maybe your soul is, is not working well. There's chaos in the job, there's chaos in the workplace, there's chaos in the marriage, there's A, B, C, D. And you're like that person in a punching ring who's been punched, 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 punched by your opponent. But when the Bible tells us that thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph, what that means is you will win whatever battle has come before you. In First John, I think it's chapter 5, he says that whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So the end for you is overcoming that situation. I know someone will be like, oh, Master DJ, ah, now I buried someone and whatnot. How come I didn't overcome? There is victory. The Bible tells us, death, where is your sting? It does not end in death. The person is a believer, obviously, they transition to heaven. And God is a comforter. That's why he gives the Holy Spirit. My pastor says that the Holy Spirit is, a, is given when the miracle doesn't happen. So God knows that you would have needed the comforter. That's why they call him a comforter and a helper and a teacher. Because he knows there will be times that in your human humanness, your fleshliness, there will be times when you cannot be able to go through the situation. So he has given you a comforter because he is in your corner. Some of you, the year 2023 has been chaotic for you. God is reminding you that for the next couple of months, it's not a feeling, it's not something you have to feel and be like, oh, what, what? No, you just have to know and have the belief in your heart that God is in your corner and all things are working for your good. In verse 29, he says, For those God for me, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he may be the firstborn among the brothers. God is in your corner so that you become more like him. Not so that, you know, in John 15, he says that you bear fruit so that God may be glorified. Everything that the purpose of you knowing God is so that you become more, more like him. Love, patient, kind, you know, uh, having having grace towards others, bearing fruit, so that he may be glorified. And so he's glorified when you become like him. Every parent wants you to be like them and even better. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus said that you will do these things and more. All the things that he has done, we as his children, we as co-heirs with Christ are able to do those things and more because he's in our corner. I'm rushing because I want to get to verse 30. It says, and those he destined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. The end is glory. At my church, Worship Harvest, we've been going through a series on a, a weekly study thing that we have called MC Live. It happens every Wednesday. If you check out the Worship Harvest uh, YouTube channel, it talks about, look for MC Live, there's justification, glorification, and sanctification. Justification, sanct sanctification, and glorification. Look for it. it the, the, the teacher speaks intensely and extensively about this thing. 
But one of the things you should know is God's will for your life is glory. That's why he said that when he foreknew you, he predestined you. After predestining you, he justified you. After justifying you, he glorified you. God wants you well. God wants you healed. God wants you shining. God wants you at the top. Because he says that we shall be the head and not the tail. We shall be above only. He says he will set you up above nations in the world. He says you'll be blessed as you go in and blessed as you come out. Because you're a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. God loves you. God has compassion on you. God feels your pain. God feels your joy when you're happy. God feels everything. In Proverbs, he says that the prayer of the righteous is pleasing to him. He also tells us in Psalms that he inhabits in the praises of his people. So God is on your corner. God loves you. God likes you. He's on your side. So no matter what it is that you're going through, you need to remember, have that as a baseline. But you know what? I'm stuck in this thing. But if everyone could walk away, a faithful man who can find. There is a friend who, who sticks closer than a brother, and that is God, through His Son Jesus Christ, by the help of the Holy Spirit. So, whatever it is you're going through, you need to remember that He wants you to be glorified because He is in your corner. We have this cloud of witnesses just shouting and screaming for us. In Psalms 20, if I could go there quickly, the writer says, In Psalms 20, he says, We will shout for joy when you're victorious. We'll lift out our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant you all your requests. Psalms 20 verse 5. God will shout for victory. He's, he's happy. All the angels and the heavenly beings are happy when you're victorious. And you will be victorious. Because thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. The end is victory. The end is glorification. Because he is in your corner. Verse 31 is where I wanted to really, really focus. He says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, if God is for us, who can be against us? When in scripture you see a question, most times it's not that they don't know the answer. It says, who? The writer of Proverbs says, why be, why be, um, what's the word that he uses? Let me look for it. Why be, why, why be in the bosom of another woman or something like that? My son. Let me look for it quickly. It says, uh, uh, why be captivated? That's the word. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 20. It says, why be captivated, my son, by an adulteress? Why embrace the bosom of another man's wife? So he's asking you this question, not because he doesn't know the answer, but it's like, why? Why would you do such a thing? Why? Show me. What's the reason? What is the benefit of this thing? So every time in scripture you see a question mark, just know. The answer is literally there in plain sight, meaning it's either not a good thing or it's a very obvious thing. So when he comes and says, if God is for us, who can be against us? It's a question like who? 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 Later in that verse, he says, nothing will separate us from the love of God. It is not death, not no demons, no what, what, what. No angels. So when he says, who can be against you? Who? Who? Many there are people who can be against you. But if God is for you, God is in your corner. Who can come against that? This is God, the creator of the universe. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the blessed breasted one. He's the lion of Judah. He's the lamb that takes away the sins of the earth. He is El Shaddai. He is Elohim. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the great I am and everything. He is everlasting. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. He is the stronghold. Besides him, there is no other. He is the father of this entire universe. His heaven is his, is his throne and earth is his footstool. He is powerful and mighty. No one can come against him. He laughs and the earth trembles. He laughs at our enemies. He's the one who puts one up and puts one down. He's the great shepherd. He leads us beside still waters. He's the restorer of souls, among many, 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 many other things. So in scripture tells you that about God, that is the person on your side. 
God is so big that he had to describe himself as the great I am. What do you need him to be? You need him to be a lawyer, he'll be a lawyer. You need him to be a healer, he'll be a healer. You need him to be a father, he'll be a father. You need him to be a, a, a judge, he will be a judge. You need him to be your friend, he will be your friend. You need him to be uh, your provider, he'll be your provider. You need him to be someone you can talk to and a comforter, he'll be, he will be that. You need him to be a lion of Judah, he will be that. You need him to be, in Psalms 18 it says that, a cry went up to God and he got so angry that smoke came out of his nostrils because he was mad that his child had been tampered with. And that's the person on your side. That's the person on your side. That's the person rooting for you. That's the person who wants you well. That's the person who wants you strong. That's the person who wants you on your feet. That's the person of whom you are born. In John 1, 5, let me read it quickly for you. John 1, chapter 5. John 1 chapter 5, I think, yes. John 1 chapter 5, verse 4. It says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. It doesn't say overcomes flu or this disease or that situation. The world, meaning the world and everything that it comes with. Flu, disease, what, stress, it is it. You overcome that. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Verse 5. Is it then? Who overcomes the world only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. God is in your corner, and God is for you if you believe and accept Jesus. You see, the world without God is like fish not in water, they'll die if you live a life without God. It's just a matter of time, and by death, I may not, I don't mean physical death that they bury you, yeah. But you, you, you live a life of death, like nothing happens. And the devil, I was thinking about it today, the devil has given us what we call, I don't know if the word is pseudo peace, okay, let me not use the word pseudo because I'm not sure what it means, but fake peace, where you know you have your job, you're okay, you're in your family, the kids are fine, etc, etc, and you don't have a relationship with God, and you can go ahead like that, feeling like, you know, everything is okay. But you're a slave to the things of the world. Now, when you accept Christ, then you begin to see God in a way that you've never seen before. And trust me, you will always imagine certain things until you experience them for yourselves. And the best way you can experience that is by knowing and accepting who Christ is. All these things I may be saying, God is in your corner, God loves you, God this, and that. If you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, it will only be things that you imagine. It will only be a thing that you probably experience on Sunday when you go to church. You're like, okay, yeah, it's church day, that's how you've been raised. But if you don't have a personal relationship with God, these things become myths to you. I know that God is a God who orders our steps. So there's a reason why you're on this podcast. Some of you, I feel like there's someone who has been watching this podcast all the time and you say i'll get saved on the next one i'll give my life christ on the next one or oh, when shiva thursday and you watch it all the time why does it come to you always now is the time you don't know what the future holds don't push it don't push it to tomorrow don't push it to next week because you do not know what the future holds and god loves you so much that he died he shed blood he shed blood for you that thing that you're struggling with can go away in an instant even if you've had it for long once you give your life Christ. It's not just a fake promise, it's not a motivational speech, but it is truth. So I want to give you an opportunity. If you've never given your life to Christ, it's very simple. Just put your hand in your chest and repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Today, I give you my life. Take it and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name, Amen, amen, amen. If you've said that prayer, you're born again. There's a number on your screen and an email address. Just write an email or send a text message. There's a pastor on the other end of the line to show you and explain to you exactly what it means to be born again. Because being born again is the best thing that has happened to life. And unfortunately, I don't have the time to share everything about being born again on this podcast. But there'll be someone who you can reach out to who will walk this journey with you. Place you in a loving family for you to be able to understand this new life that you've entered because you and god are now one his spirit is in you and you're one with him and the fullness of god dwells in you to the rest of you i pray over you that the next quarter of the year will be your best that you see god in ways you've not seen before and i prophesy to you that the next seven days will be extra extraordinary for you 
effortlessly in your jobs, effortlessly as you work on that application, that visa application, effortlessly as you go to the doctor for a review, effortlessly as you go for anti-mental checkups, whatever you are expecting, everything will be effortless. God puts people on your mind who will think of you. They will not have peace until they have called you because he knows he wants to get through you. So he will, he will speak to them and they will call you and they will bless you and you will testify. Once again, this is what up. See you next week on Thursday at 1 p.m. Same channel. It's the month of September. It will be a very, very new, interesting and fresh series. Those of you who will be at the Leaders Gathering tomorrow, Transform at Washita Vesnalia, feel free. Come say hi. Celebrate with me. Might eight years with Jesus. God bless you. You're loved. You're blessed. You're elevated. You're for signs and wonders. Bye.